The film which you are about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of fishermen in Australia. Originally from Townsville, Australia, which is located here in the northeastern part of the country, Ray Boundy was a highly accomplished fisherman and was even the captain of his own 45 foot long shrimping boat named New Venture. And along with his best friend Dennis Murphy and his girlfriend Linda Horton, the three made up the best fishing crew anyone could want. And on the day of July 20th, 1983, Ray and his crew had been making preparations for a shrimping trip off the coast in a location known as Coral Sea and set sail later that evening. Dennis, like Ray, had a ton of experience at sea, though just like the other two, was still in his early 20s. While Linda, Ray's girlfriend's main role was to cook for the crew, she was not as experienced in the open water as the other two, though compared to an average person, she definitely had her sea legs. Coral Sea, the location that the three were heading to, was just on the other side of the Great Barrier Reef, and they were heading there for an entire week of fishing and fun. The first two days were like the three were on vacation as they relaxed and hung out all day and were able to get some fishing in all night. Though on the faithful day of July 22nd, the crew was suddenly hit with the high winds and massive waves that bombarded them continuously. And instead of cutting the fishing trip short, they decided to stick it out and wait for it to end. A decision that later, unfortunately, they would live to regret. Because as it got darker and darker and midnight finally hit, the weather conditions were still too extreme to go anywhere. Which only meant that the probability of something bad happening was only going higher and higher. And just then, multiple massive waves started to pummel their boat which in return caused internal flooding. Ray and Linda then rushed to the wheelhouse in order to try and drain as much water as possible. And meanwhile, Dennis stayed up top making sure everything was still good on deck, when suddenly he saw a massive wave coming straight for them, but with no time to let the others two know what was going on below deck and let them know what was coming for them, Dennis decided to jump into the ocean in order to save his life just before the boat immediately capsized. All the while, Ray and Linda already being in a room filled with water struggle incredibly as they both try to find a small air pocket in order to survive, which luckily they both were able to find. And while they were in there, they were quickly able to devise a plan to quickly escape the boat. They then both dove down and escaped through the wheelhouse entrance. Then once they were able to make it back to the surface, they then realized that Dennis was close by, which was incredibly lucky because of the multiple waves hitting them in the faces. They then gathered close together and swam as strongly as they could against the current and waves as all of them were able to pull themselves out of the water and as they all sat on top of their overturned boat in the middle of a storm in the middle of the ocean that's when their nightmarish situation finally hit them almost like a sick dream then as sunday turned to monday the three of them sat for the next few hours thinking of a way to get themselves rescued ray then remembered thinking to himself that he remembered taking down their coordinates just before the storm hit and he knew that they were approximately 59 miles from townsville and at least 28 miles from any closest group of islands or patches closest land though thinking that they would either eventually sink or drift off too far to get rescued they would then decide to grab most of their important supplies and create a small makeshift life raft made out of a surfboard life ring styrofoam boxes, a beer cooler, and some rope tying it all together. And they would try their luck at drifting and paddling towards the Great Barrier Reef in order for a better chance to get rescued. And so with everything they could carry, the three set off as soon as they were done constructing the raft. Though as they set sail, one thought kept looming in the back of their minds. And that was that they were in great fishing waters, which now meant that they were also most likely swimming with multiple hungry predators as well, having multiple feeding frenzies just beneath them. Though despite this, they carried on. And as day turned to night, they knew that their chances for survival would go down as well. Though luckily for them, they were already a quarter of the way to the reef, and so with that, they kept paddling as hard as they could. But just then, they would see something that would make their hearts drop into their stomachs. In the distance, they would see a large fin break the water, which as they saw it happening, they realized it was only a few feet away. And so panicking started to ensue. Ray then looked to the others and made sure to reassure them that sharks usually only eat fish and seals and that attacks on people are pretty rare and that if a shark is this close to them, that it was most likely just curious. So the group just kept going in the same direction. Though by this time, their makeshift raft was beginning to slowly come apart. And in order to stay afloat, all three of them had to separate onto their own separate mini rafts. And as all three of them were then just drifting along, Ray suddenly felt an enormous presence of what turned out to be a 15-foot tiger shark right below him, which unfortunately for our three friends is one of the three species of sharks that usually attack people on sight. 
and just as they feared, the massive beast then tried to bite down onto Ray's knee. But before it could fully bite down, Ray kicked it as hard as he could in the nose, which sent the beast swimming away. Though now realizing the horrific scenario that they had now just found themselves in, the group had no choice but to keep going forward. Their paranoia was now going through the roof though, as each small wave broke against their wrath, thinking that the shark was coming back for more. Though by doing this, they truly realized just how powerless they were if it decided to come back. And what made matters truly worse was that the only light that they had to see the monster coming for them was by moonlight, making the majority of their surroundings by this time pitch black, making it almost impossible to know where an attack would come from, making a bad situation into a complete nightmare. And as they were drifting further along, about 10 minutes would go by when someone would notice a fin break the water once again which luckily for them was illuminated by the moonlight. The three then went absolutely silent in order to listen to where the beast might strike, which was almost impossible due to the pitch black conditions and moving water all around them. Then a few minutes later, Dennis would let out a scream that would pierce through the night. It's got my leg. The bastard's got my leg. Ray would then yell back to Dennis to start kicking his legs towards the shark's face to get it to swim away. But unfortunately, as Dennis's blood started to fill into the ocean, the shark was essentially into an all-out frenzy. And horrifically, just as quickly as it began, Dennis was drugged underneath the water down into the black abyss below. And after a few minutes of silence, Dennis's body would then finally reappear and pop back out of the water. That's when Ray and Linda would notice the blood surrounding Dennis's body, which immediately prompted Ray to swim over and try to attempt to rescue him. And as he got closer, he would quickly realize that Dennis's entire leg was now missing, but at least he was still alive. Ray and Linda then quickly began searching for anything that they could use as a tourniquet, but unfortunately, just then, the 15-foot monster returned, and upon seeing this, Dennis knew that his time was up. So in an act of complete courage, he shouts out to Ray and Linda to take this opportunity to escape and to just leave him behind. But before they even had a chance to tell him no, Dennis pushed their rafts away and started swimming the best he could in the opposite direction. And knowing that there was nothing that they could do to stop him, and knowing that this was their only chance for escape, they started to paddle as fast as they could towards the reef. Though as they turn back, they're greeted by a scene straight from their worst nightmares. They see Dennis's body begin to be lifted out of the water and surge forward as a shark snags him up. Then they saw their friend disappear completely as his body was pulled down under for the last time. And unfortunately, it would be at this time that Linda would suffer a nervous breakdown from the fear and stress of the situation that they now found themselves in. Then horribly, she would begin to scream uncontrollably as she knew she had no control over her situation and could die at any moment. Stunned by the noise, Ray then raced over to Linda and grabbed her by the shoulders to calm her down and tried to remind her that they were almost to safety and that they just had to keep going forward. Linda then took a deep breath and agreed with Ray and then kept paddling. Another two hours then went by and the two are finally able to calm down and just focus on the silence of the ocean. Well, that was until one of them saw a large fan break the water just a few feet from their location which immediately made the hair on the back of their neck stand up and their hearts drop into their stomachs once again. Because as if they were stuck in some horrible 1980s slasher film. It turns out that once the shark was done with their friend, it instantly began tracking them down for more. And as the monster got closer, it began encircling our friends, as if it was initially toying with them, psychologically letting them know just how easy it would be to drag them both below to the abyss and be able to just eat them both like it was nothing. All the while, Ray and Linda would paddle closer together and hold hands, frozen by the fear alone. And after a couple of minutes of this, the shark, without warning, would then make its move. With lightning speed, it then raced towards Linda in an attempt to knock her off. And once it got close enough, the beast then reached out, biting down on Linda's chest and arm, and simultaneously pulling on her with such force it immediately ripped her out of the hand of Ray. All the while, all Ray could do is watch as the horrifying monster began to shake its head from side to side in a vicious attempt to end her life. Then sadly, once Ray knew that there was nothing more that he could do, he then turned around and began paddling as fast as he could towards the nearest reef for safety. A few more hours would pass by as the sun started to appear over the horizon, and now Ray was only a few hundred feet away from the reef, so close that it's now in his view as he drifts closer and closer. Though unfortunately, just as his salvation is now just in view, he once again saw the infamous fin glisten in the distance. Then, with a sudden boost of adrenaline and the need to survive, Ray began to paddle towards the reef as fast as he possibly could. As he did this, he would begin to notice the shark gaining on him. Though maybe through divine intervention, 
or just pure luck, he would catch the break of a lifetime. A decent sized wave was heading straight for them, and so he made sure with all his might to catch it, which by the grace of God, then gave him the boost and separation he needed in order to escape and get to safety, where he then pulled himself to semi-dry land, and he was able to wait for help, agonizingly thinking about what just happened and how he's lucky to be alive. Then just a little later at 10.40 a.m. on Tuesday morning, Ray was finally rescued by the Australian Air Force, an incredible 36 hours after the initial storm hit. And even luckier for him, the Air Force had been searching for them since the storm hit on Sunday. And once again, thank you for watching. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and turn on the notification bell for more content in the future. Goodbye for now.